My name is Dan Fugate, and I serve as Assistant to the Bishop for Discipleship in the Indiana-Kentucky Synod. I am pleased to be able to share in worship with you and to share God's Word with you um, in this way. This has been prepared for the fourth Sunday in Advent, December 20th, 2020. I bring you greetings from Bishop Bill Guffian, from my colleagues on the Synod staff, and from the more than 170 congregations and ministries of our Synod across the state of Indiana and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm that he appointed for this day is Luke chapter 1, verses 46b through verse 55. Mary says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebearers, to Abraham and his children forever. Our gospel for this day comes from the first chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as I noted, today we observe the fourth Sunday of Advent, and Christmas is just around the corner. In the gospel appointed for today, we hear how the story of Jesus' birth began for Mary. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to Nazareth in order to visit Mary, and he greeted her with these words, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. St. Luke tells us that Mary was much perplexed by these words, and she pondered what sort of greeting this might be. You really can't blame her. I mean, think about it. An angel shows up and says, 
Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Well, what does that mean? Mary had to be confused. First of all, how often does someone get visited by an angel? And Mary, this young girl who wasn't rich or famous, probably wouldn't have described herself as a favored one. As she went about her work, she might not have even thought much about the Lord being with her. Well, if she thought that greeting was unusual, that was nothing compared to what the angel had to say next. You know the story. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor, favor with God. And now you will conceive and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Now that was startling. If the greeting perplexed Mary, this news had to shock her. It really didn't make much sense. In fact, Mary pushed back a bit. She said, how can this be since I'm a virgin? But the angel explained. Mary is common, she's ordinary, not really a big deal in her world, and not the stuff of legend. But after expressing her wonder and dismay, and then hearing again Gabriel's affirmation and promise, nothing is impossible with God, Mary manages to summon the courage to believe that God has indeed favored her by working in her and through her, for the life of the world. And you know Mary's famous response. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary puts her trust in God. She trusts God enough to risk shame, social disgrace, even death by stoning. Martin Luther said that the greatest miracle of Mary's story was not that, she con not that she conceived, but that she believed. There are other examples in Scripture of God choosing people to play an important part or an important role in God's work in the world, but these people often tried to say no before they give in to the requests that God makes. Moses tried to say no a number of times. Isaiah said no by pointing out his unclean lips. Jeremiah said, I can't speak for your God because I'm only a boy. Jonah ran in the opposite direction. Mary didn't say no. Mary didn't argue. She didn't run in the opposite direction. She said, let it be with me according to your will. One of the things that strikes me about this story is how it begins. Mary's going about her business and the angel Gabriel appears to her and says, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. The reason that sticks out for me is because it's a greeting that could apply to each one of us. Each one of us has been created and loved by God. Each one of us, you and me, is favored by God. And the Lord is with each one of us. Sometimes we begin to think of God as being sort of passive in our world. We think that maybe God set the world in motion and then left it to its own devices. Or we think that God just hangs out in the background watching and waiting, maybe being supportive or encouraging on occasion. Bette Midler sang a song a few years back in which the words of the chorus said, God is watching us, God is watching us, God is watching us from a distance. Sometimes that's how we think of God. God is watching us from a distance. But that's not the biblical picture of God. Certainly God watches but God also gets involved. God does things, all kinds of things, big and small. God is constantly at work. In fact, God regularly uses other people to point out and to tell what God is doing. 
God regularly works in and through others to be about God's work in the world. The amazing thing is that God uses ordinary, common people. Mary wasn't rich or famous. She wasn't a mover or a shaker. She was a young girl betrothed to a carpenter. And God chose her to bear the Son of God. The amazing thing is that God uses ordinary common people like you and me to bear God's love to others and to serve others in Jesus' name. This past Sunday evening, I had a Zoom call with some of the adults who were part of our last Synod Youth Mission trip, and we talked about whether there's any way we can plan for a COVID-safe youth mission trip for the summer of 2021. But what we also did was remember the ways in which young people from across our synod came together and served others in Jesus' name in and around Louisville. They served meals at the Lord's Kitchen and the Franciscan Center. They arranged flowers and delivered them to nursing home residents through the Flower Bud Ministry. They helped with the food pantries at First Lutheran Church in Louisville and Grace and Glory Lutheran Church in Goshen. They eradicated invasive plants at a park in Louisville. They worked with memory-impaired nursing home residents, among a number of other projects. These, nursing, uh, these high school students, like you and me, didn't necessarily see themselves as favored ones and probably weren't always aware that the Lord was with them. But they, like us, are favored by God. And the Lord is with them, and the Lord is with us. And God chooses us to be about God's mission, to be about God's work in the world. God chooses us, as unlikely as that may be, to make a difference in the lives of others through love and service. In just a few days, we'll once again celebrate Christmas, and I know that it'll probably be different than the way that we've celebrated Christmas in the past. And if we're honest, some of us might be disappointed. But the good news has not changed. The good news of a Savior, the Word made flesh, born as a baby in Bethlehem, is not different. God has entered our world with the light of Christ. Christ is the light bearer who knows even our deepest personal darkness but fills us full of light. Christ gives us the light of his love, and we're called to share it, to shine the light into the lives of others. The powerful love of God has come near. It's come close, and it's taken on a human face, and that face is the face of Jesus. And sometimes that face is the face of a common, ordinary person, like you, or like me. My friends, you are favored by God. The Lord is with you. Amen. I invite you now to join me in prayer. Each petition will end with the words, Hear us, O God, and the response is, Your mercy is great. Let us pray. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. We pray for our own Evangelical Lutheran Church in America our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, the Indiana-Kentucky Synod, and our Bishop Bill. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify, amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Let there be peace on earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nurse those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out your mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Curb the coronavirus and strengthen medical workers. We pray for those with COVID-19 who we name before you now in our hearts. Guide all, guide all World Health Organizations and governmental officials in the distribution of the vaccines and calm the fears of those who, who are reluctant to receive the vaccine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebearers. We give you thanks for the ministry of Katerina von Bora Luther, and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me in praying together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me for this time of worship. I'd like to wish you and yours peace and joy at Christmas and in the coming new year.